Professor of Genetics and Developmental Biology at the University of Melbourne, Andrew Pask, is one of the scientists involved in the research and joins us now. Good morning and thanks for coming on News Breakfast. Good morning. Well, first of all, tell us a little bit about this research. Yeah, so we've been working for a while now on trying to bring the Tasmanian tiger back, but we've just announced that we've almost completely sequenced the entire genome of the Tasmanian tiger, which is an incredible feat for uh, an extinct species. It's the single most complete genome that's ever been put together for any extinct animal. And we're really excited to announce that because it really paves the way for really doing this project and bringing that species back. Yeah, so uh, what are we actually looking at and what sort of timeline? Yeah, so now it's given us that, that really detailed look at uh, exactly what the, the DNA of this animal looked like. The other incredible thing that we found um, was that we can actually get RNA from these specimens as well. So that's different from the DNA. Um, it's a much less stable molecule that we never thought you'd be able to find in an extinct animal. But that can tell us heaps about the biology of the animal. It can really tell us about how the thylacine saw, how it tasted, how its brain worked. All of these things we can start to unpack from this incredible resource that we found. And that was uh, a head of uh, adult thylacine that was literally in a bucket uh, in the museum's Victoria collection. So we found this, we call it head in a bucket specimen that enabled us to do this incredible genome and to find this RNA. And then that really accelerates the way in which we can drive now the de-extinction of this animal. We have a much, much better idea of exactly all the things we have to do to bring this animal back. And I guess this is something that has always captured the imagination of Australians, the idea that we've got those 1920s pictures of the thylacine mm. pacing backwards and forwards, the last living one. To bring it back to yep. life, uh, you, there's a lot of people who say, watch what you wish for. Uh, you know, we've seen Jurassic Park. <laughs> Yeah, for sure. I mean, the, the important distinction here is unlike Jurassic Park, we're bringing back an animal that's only been lost for 88 years, not 60 million years, right? So the environment <laughs> to put it back into is still there in Tasmania. But importantly, it played a really critical role in balancing that ecosystem in Tasmania. It was the very top of the food chain there. And when we lost the thylacine, we could see this destabilisation, this breakdown of that entire chain that it, it sat at the top of in Tasmania. And a great example of that is the Tasmanian devil that nearly went extinct from the facial tumour disease. Mm. That's something that is kept in check when you have that predator around. And so it's really important that we think about de-extinction as a really important conservation tool and bringing back some of these species that were so important in our landscape. Yeah, and uh, obviously you need to get the vessel to make sure that you can actually birth the, don't you? <laughs> Yes, yeah. So, you know, there's a, there's a lot of steps in doing the de-extinction. So another breakthrough that we have is around the assisted reproductive technology. So ways in which we can produce uh, a little baby embryonic thylacine. But actually for birthing a thylacine, we're going to use a, a dunart, which is a little mouse sized yeah. marsupial. But this is one of the amazing things about marsupials is they give birth to such tiny little babies. They can in do fact, it. A, a baby thylacine yeah, a baby thylacine was probably not much bigger than a grain of rice. Mm. And so even a little mouse-sized dunnart can give birth to uh, thylacine. Great. Professor of Genetics and Developmental Biology at the University of Melbourne, Andrew Pask, thank you so much for your time on that. Thank you.